Hi, you've clicked onto the Tropical Tidbit for Thursday evening, July 11th. As always, the thoughts here are mine alone, and in making decisions, consult the National Hurricane Center, your local NWS office, and your local officials for the latest information that is pertinent to your location. We're tracking what is now Tropical Storm Barry in the Gulf of Mexico, a fully formed tropical cyclone now. And uh, while the forecast for the storm has been fraught with uncertainty in the last few days due to the complexities surrounding it, as promised, we are starting to get some answers now. Uh, the storm has formed, we can see where it is, and we can see what its structure is like. And some things that we notice right away on the visible satellite imagery today are that the circulation is, is very large, first of all. Uh, so you'll see this ring of rotating air here, uh, but it's rather wide. There's this inner region where the winds are very light, and so we have this very uh, wide donut-shaped area of circulation. This means the radius of maximum wind is large, and that means a couple of things. One, it's hard to tighten up a circulation that is this large. It will eventually get smaller as some of the eddies rotating around it start to mix momentum inward over time. It will eventually collapse, but that process takes time, a couple of days, and the storm only has about that long over water, if not less. And uh, when the circulation is large, it's difficult to generate an inner core. Uh, another thing that's making an inner core hard to generate is the fact that there's nothing going on in the northern semicircle of the storm right now. There's a lot of dry air getting pushed in by northerly shear, uh, which we talked about yesterday coming uh, down, evident from these cirrus clouds coming off of the Gulf Coast states indicating that northeasterly flow impinging upon the circulation. If you look underneath the thunderstorm series here, you'll see this background tongue of dark gray underneath all of that, indicating dry air in the mid to upper levels, which is getting pushed in by the shear. And this has proved very potent, such that we have had no thunderstorm activity at all on the northern side of Barrie today. Now this has had some interesting impacts, one of which being that with all the thunderstorm activity confined to the southern side, there's been some tugging of the circulation uh, because some of these mesoscale eddies, you can see one here, there's one buried in here, and there's an old one over here that are rotating around counterclockwise and as these sequentially move into the area of convective activity they get amplified and can generate anomalous vorticity on the southwestern and southern side of the circulation which then tugs the entire thing just a tad toward the south or southwest and that has happened today to the extent that the storm is just a little bit southwest of where some of the models like the GFS and HWARF had predicted it to be by this time tonight. For that reason that's affecting a little bit of the track forecast. Some of the solutions that had it coming all the way up into New Orleans uh, were probably based in the fact that the storm was farther northeast tonight and tomorrow morning. Some of that position correction now has led some of those models to shift farther to the west like some of the other models show, and so we're getting some additional confidence in the track forecast as well. We'll talk about that more in a second. Now with all this dry air in the northern side of the circulation, this is going to make it difficult for the system to form an inner core for some time. It doesn't really have enough time over water to get rid of this air mass entirely. The two are going to be pretty entangled, especially given that the shear is not really expected to disappear. Uh, while the upper level shear here is going to let up tomorrow, it's going to be replaced by some mid-level shear, so it's just going to be at a different vertical level, and the storm is likely to remain somewhat tilted uh, for uh, the rest of its life here. Now, given that its size is so large, that inner core that some models were expecting to develop prior to landfall may have a tough time showing up, and so intensification for Barry is likely to be limited, not zero. It is expected to intensify and is currently doing so, uh, but it will likely be somewhat limited on its way to the coast and most of its lifetime will probably see uh, thunderstorm activity on only one side. Right now it's on the southern side. By the time of landfall it may be more on the eastern and southern side and you may see a giant convective band toward the east and maybe just over the center of the storm. That's probably what its structure will look like. This is going to mean that near and east of the landfall point you're expecting a lot of rain, especially to the right of landfall. Lots of rain will fall and that's where we're looking for that flooding threat. I'll show you some of those graphics in a second. Uh, this is the recon data really quick. The new plane is in there, and I'll refresh it for a second. The plane is flying at 700 millibars, so this is not the surface uh, wind that you're seeing here, but you can see that the 700 millibar low is probably tucked in here somewhere at uh, the mid-levels, and the surface center is 
is pretty large. It's it's all around in here. There's one gyre. There's a second one here. Uh, so they're they're not too tilted from one another right now. And the pressure is about a thousand millibars according to the latest plane data I saw in this location. So that pressure has been coming down during the course of the day today at a decent pace, indicating that the storm is indeed spinning up and slowly. Uh, getting stronger. However, again, the pace on that intensification is likely to have a damper on it due to this a very large structure that's difficult to tighten over time and the fact that we have all this dry air limiting thunderstorm activity. Uh, so as this continues to drift toward the west here, we're eventually going to expect it to take a turn toward the north. Exactly where that turn takes place, of course, there's still wiggle room here, uh, but the consensus has largely come into agreement that this is going to try to sneak up toward Vermilion Bay somewhere along the central Louisiana coastline and make its way slowly inland. The storm will be probably dancing a little bit given its very large structure. We may see little mesovortices such as this rotate around from time to time and that could make the system wobble a little bit on its way toward the coast. So exactly when it comes ashore and at exactly what point of the coastline who knows, but there's not really a reason to get wrapped up too much in the exact landfall location, given that we're not expecting a major hurricane with an eye wall or anything like that. We're expecting kind of a sloppy storm, given the trends that we're seeing today. And so really what you're looking for is in general, near and east of the landfall location is where all the rain and storm surge is gonna happen. And that's really the big key here are the water threats. There's not gonna be a huge wind threat at landfall, but we are expecting winds of somewhere around 70 to 75 miles per hour at the time of landfall at this time. And this is the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center showing that slow west then northwest motion toward the coast. Sometime Saturday morning probably is when we're expecting this to be close to the coastline. Uh, they note in their discussion here that the landfall occurs between these two forecast points and there's a distinct possibility that the storm is at hurricane strength, winds of 75 miles an hour at the time of landfall. Keep in mind that this distinction is rather academic at this point, whether it has winds of 70, 75, 80, it's about in that ballpark range. Whether it's technically the word hurricane isn't going to matter so much here. It's likely to be kind of a sloppy system with very strong southerly winds on the eastern side uh, coming into the coast, which are expected to be you know, 60, 70 miles an hour. And uh, that's gonna bring storm surge up the Mississippi River and the Delta here. There are storm surge warnings and watches all along southeastern Louisiana and southern Mississippi. And we have hurricane warnings along the central and eastern Louisiana coastlines uh, for the wind threat there. So storm surge backing up the Mississippi River is one concern. Surge flooding in general in flooding zones along the coast is a concern. And the inland rainfall, also a big concern here with a track generally into central Louisiana. You can see again near and to the right of landfall is where this swath of water is expected to fall. Many inches, perhaps over 20 inches in some areas near the landfall location uh, is gonna be a big concern for inland flooding. And then the swelling of rivers in the lower Mississippi Valley following the storm passage could cause river flooding even well after the storm has made landfall. Uh, so keep this in mind. Flooding is the big problem here. And stay tuned to your local NWS office and local officials for the latest information on that for your area. So that's about all there is to say for Barry today. Some of those questions we've had are getting answered. The storm is rather sloppy compared to what it could have been at this time, but is still expected to intensify a bit before landfall could approach hurricane strength winds at the coast, but storm surge and heavy rain are the primary concerns with flooding being the great danger here in the lower Mississippi Valley during the coming days. That's it for tonight. Thanks for watching.